Hello cookbook friends, this is Carrie with Cookbook Divas, and today we're going to look through the New Orleans kitchen. It was one of my cookbook library halls, and I grabbed it because every 10 years for my painful birthday, or the big ones, so 30, 40, and 50, I go to New Orleans. I'd love to go more often than that, but it's expensive to fly and stay in nice hotels and eat at fancy restaurants. Anyway, let's check it out. It's by Justin de Villiers with Jamie Feldmar. And a lot of this is going to be meat, and I'm a vegetarian, but I'm going to do a good job of showing you the meat recipes anyway. I think this came out in 2019. It's Lorena Jones Books, an imprint of 10 Speed Press. Let's check out the table of contents. There are stocks, sauces and dressings, appetizers, side dishes, salads, soups and stews, and seafood. And it keeps going. Whoa, poultry, meat, dessert, and then at the end, basics such as bouquet garni, preserved lemon peel, oven dried tomatoes, log, oh, LPG burger pickles, basic pickles. I don't know what's going on. Okay, introduction. Mm -hmm. Let's get to the recipes. Introduction, here's a picture of New Orleans. Here's, whoa, some fruit. About this book, when I decided I wanted to write a cookbook, I spent a lot of time thinking about the books that have shaped me at different stages of my journey as a chef. I realized the ones that have had the biggest impact on me the, were the ones I read when I was just starting out. A super curious 21-year-old cook who wanted to absorb every bit of information I could. No chef I worked for would have allowed me to develop dishes and experiment in their professional kitchen, and I was most creative at the stove of the under-equipped crash pad that I called home. Hmm, okay. Late nights feeding hungry co-workers on Sunday or Sunday spent cooking all day and drinking beer with our small group of friends were the norm. The books I considered during that time became, oh, consulted during that time became key in helping me understand the techniques and processes that shaped my own style of cooking and eventually became the backbone of my cuisine. I hope this book will do the same for you. That's very nice. Key ingredients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Core techniques. Look at that. That's my favorite color. Okay, here we go. So stocks, sauces, and dressings. Three things I don't usually make myself. I just buy them. Ooh, here's a blonde roux with some step-by-step -step photos. We're off to a good start. A brown roux with step-by-step -step photos. Yay, thank you for those. A dark roux. A beef stock and demi-gloss. Or glace. Brown butter vinaigrette step-by-step -step photos okay cool now we're getting into some like bacon vinaigrette crushed olive vinaigrette with no pictures but we don't need pictures to know what a vinaigrette is going to look like fair enough fish sauce caramel bagna cotta homemade hot sauce something i've never tried to make green goddess dressing remoulade now we're in appetizers let's see what's going on here <gasps> mm. pan fried green tomatoes with burrata and country ham Yes, please. Just skip the ham for me. That looks amazing. Pan seared goat cheese dumplings with herb pea stew. There they are, I think. Uh, Louisiana style pickled quail eggs. Oops, that, that would be quail eggs. Excuse me. The other thing didn't have a picture. Cornbread pancakes with American paddlefish caviar. Something I will never eat, but some of you might have. Blue crab beignets. I admit, when I go to New Orleans for my birthday, I eat one tiny, two little bites of something with fish in it, just to see what it's like, like a crab cake. But I share it with a friend so my friend can eat the rest of it. Here's a crawfish pierogi. I admit, I kind of liked crawfish cakes. I tried alligator, that didn't go well. Shrimp salad with preserved lemon and arbequina olives. Other than that, I'm a lifelong vegetarian. Shrimp and okra fritters. Marinated octopus, beautiful presentation. Loving the photographs so far. Country pork pate, biscuit and pate brunch sandwiches. Now we're in side dishes. Let's take a look. I'll find a couple good examples for you, but I can't show you the whole book. Roasted cauliflower steaks with toasted almonds and brown butter, a good vegetarian option. It is hard to find vegetarian food in New Orleans at restaurants. Braised collards with chopped ham hocks. I love collard greens. I don't use them with meat, of course. Butter beans and rice. Yum. Field peas and tomato gravy. P 
Tom's Anna-ish. Not sure what that is. Classic potato salad. I like trying different recipes for that. I'm going to move on and try to find the next chapter, but here's a savory bread pudding that looks good. Am I in a new? Yes, salad chapter. Let's find just a couple examples. Ooh, this is pretty. Okay, what is next? Chilled beet salad with tarragon emulsion. Yum. Wanted you to see that for sure. Celery root and apple salad. Poached shrimp and green bean salad with buttermilk dressing. Now we're in soups and stews. Let me find a good couple examples of that. Caramelized onion soup with smoked bacon and blue cheese. Mm-hmm. Looks good. How about brown butter parsnip soup? Here's chilled corn and coconut soup with basil and blue crab. Pumpkin and shellfish bisque with pumpkin seed pistou. That looks good. Okay. What's next? Ooh, duck and an andouille gumbo. Well, of course, there's going to be some gumbo in here. I wish I could remember the restaurant we went to where we got the best vegetarian gumbo of my life in New Orleans. Now we're in the seafood chapter. How about steamed clams with white wine and fresh vegetables? Here's step-by-step -step photos of baked oysters with greens, bacon, and parmesan. Seafood boil, garlic chili, barbecue shrimp. I bet a lot of you just ruled because that sounded good to you. Crawfish etouffee. Of course there's an etouffee recipe in here. Seared scallops with garlicky brown butter pan sauce. Okay, let's get out of seafood and get into the meat chapter. No, nope, I'm still in seafood. Okay, here we go. Pan roasted chicken thighs with tangerine marmalade and thyme. Chicken noodle soup with lemongrass. Roasted chicken rice paper rolls. Cornbread stuffed quail over smothered field peas. And duck confit. Oops, one of my turkey pastrami sandwiches. Oh, now we're in the meat chapter. That was poultry, excuse me. Slow cooked rabbit. Ooh, mm -mm, I'm not showing you that picture. That was gross. Okay. Shaved pork loin on toast with mustard jus and chow chow. What is chow chow? Somebody let me know in the comments. I have no idea. And lamb chops basted in sage butter. And how about grilled skirt steak with salsa verde? And now we're in the dessert chapter. Let me find a couple good examples. I can't show you the whole book. Ice cream, goat cheese mousse. That sounds good. Chocolate chicory coffee pots de creme, cornbread financiers with sea salt ice cream. Here's brown butter crepes with rum raisin ice cream and step-by-step -step photos. Yay! What else can I show you here? Hmm. These are, oh, basics. Pickled shallots, sauerkraut, charcuterie, etc., etc. All right, that was the New Orleans kitchen. Can't wait to hear what you thought of it. I'm definitely intrigued by this. I wanted to try a lot of the vegetarian recipes. Very good cookbook, great photos, step-by-step -step pictures, love it. Thanks so much for watching this cookbook look-through and review by Cookbook Divas. You can find us on our blog. We have a podcast for those of you that like to listen to that kind of thing. If not, just ignore it. We post to Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube is where you'll find our cookbook videos. Thanks so much, and be sure to click like and comment if you want the algorithms to show you more of our posts. Bye!